All right, so let's go ahead and run the test. One thing that I quickly want to mention between the last time that I was recording this course and now my ReSharper membership, my ReSharper free trial actually expired, which kind of sucks and I'm disappointed at, so I won't have ReSharper to help me. But I also realized that there's a bright side to this in that you guys will get to see me interacting with a natural Visual Studio environment. So for all of you that don't want ReSharper and aren't using it, you can see that and see how that works instead. I have a ReSharper license. All I have to do is log in. I just don't remember my credentials right now. And like I said, there's a bright side, which I actually wanted to take advantage of. So it actually works out in your benefit, even though I'm going to be the one that suffers because I love ReSharper. But anyways, let's go ahead and run the test. You guys can see how right away it looks very different without ReSharper before I had those little bubbles to help me out. Now I don't, but Visual Studio 2015 has this little X right here. I can open it up and it tells me that my last test failed and I can either debug this or run it. And I am going to run this test and we're going to see what happens. Here's the browser. So one other thing that I noticed along the way is that the Chrome driver is not being closed. So our cleanup method is not cleaning up. I did a little bit of research on Google and I think that's actually a fault with the Selenium Chrome driver. So there's not much I can do about that. We just unfortunately have to close it manually. I believe it works for Firefox, but remember my Firefox looks really crappy in this resolution here. So I had to use Chrome driver for you guys. So therefore the cleanup method, let me show you guys what I'm talking about to be sure. The cleanup method is actually not closing or quitting the browser. So it's being left over in my processes, but if you guys can easily do initialize with Firefox driver up here, and then hopefully that should work out for you. Just something to keep in mind. Anyway, so the test finished. We can actually look at the test explorer and you can see that this test over here took nine seconds to run. If we expand this, we can scroll down and this is how the visual studios unit test runner looks. And you can see that message assert that is true failed. A valid user was not able to successfully log in. Look at that. So what does that tell you guys? Does that tell you guys where it failed? This says where it failed, line 11, line 11, which is not right, but basically it failed here, right? A valid user was not able to successfully log in. That is our message that we passed in when this assertion did not pass successfully. Therefore, we tried to log in, but the page did not load fast enough for us to be able to log in and therefore this thing right here, this is at method using this failed because the page was too slow for our test. And we get into one of the most common issues with automated functional testing is the synchronization issues. For those of you that have previously used other automation tools, you may know exactly what I'm talking about. And for those of you that don't, this is a very typical thing where your automated tests, because they're being ran by a machine, are constantly timing out because they're too fast. And so while this page was loading, this assertion here already failed. And so that caused a test failure, an invalid test failure, because had it waited for another second or two, everything would have been excellent. So how do we fix these timeout issues?